take. I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you that I didn't feel any older when Shirley Temple became a foreign ambassador, and I didn't feel older when Hollywood's Andy Hardy and Mickey Rooney became a grandfather. But what really had me checking for wrinkles and gray hair was the news that little Marie Osmond got married and last April had a baby. Here she is, singer, dancer, actress, wife, and mother, Marie Osmond, right here. <laughs> They think your last act was a smash, see? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mrs. Stephen Craig, huh? That's right. Thank you, Bob. It's great to be here. By the way, Stephen is the name of my baby, too. Is He'll be right? five months old tomorrow. How about that? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. oh, I like it. Five months old. Has he sung his first note yet? No, but he cries beautifully. Right on key, you know? Oh, <laughs> well, me, tell us about this lucky husband of yours. Well, Bob, he's almost too good to be true. He's tall, good-looking, has a beautiful physique. He was a basketball star. He's a very successful businessman, and he encourages me in my career. Has a, a wonderful disposition. We never fight. He's considerate, warm, affectionate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who tuned in late, this is not Fantasy Island. <laughs> Would you like to throw a couple more minutes in on about the baby? Sure. You see, he's a happy, healthy baby going on six months. <laughs> <laughs> and he opens in Las Vegas next week. No, we had to cancel that. <laughs> he was uncomfortable in the sequin diapers. <laughs> sequin diapers? Well, it never bothered Liberace. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, you plan to have any more? Oh, definitely, but right now, you know, little Steven, he won't run short of any playmates. He has 39 first cousins, all under the age of 14. Mm, you know, you, you've got enough there to form your own Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> you know, Marie, we've got a lot in common. You have eight brothers and I had six. Well, that might be true, but it was a little bit different in my case. You see, being the only girl, they pampered me and protected me. And... Yeah, just like my brother did for me. <laughs> Yeah, I wore curls till I was 17. <laughs> but it wasn't so bad. I won a Lillian Gish look-alike contest. How did you lose your curls? Indians. <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? Well, I was, uh, I was trying to picture you as a baby. In a cat. <laughs> Why not? They had babies back in those days. <laughs> For a matter of fact, I was a very unique baby. I didn't see daylight until I was six weeks old. Well, how, how could that be? Well, my mother was nearsighted and she kept diapering the wrong end. <laughs> that, that would explain your unique profile. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you know, Bob, I want to thank you so much for having me on the show with all these wonderful astronauts. Well, it's a kick for me, too. How would you like to take a trip on one of those shuttles? Well, I'm all ready. I would love to be the first performer to entertain in space. I mean, wouldn't you love that? Oh, absolutely. And if my act didn't go over, I could be the first to lay an egg in space. <laughs> like that, they might even put it in orbit for me. <laughs> Are you ready for our moon medley? I'm all ready. You know, some of the others on the show, they've walked on the moon. Yeah. Well, at least we can sing about it. You're so right. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yes. By the light, By the light of, the of the silvery moon, I want to spoon to my honey all cool loves to honeymoon. Keep a shining in June Your silvery beams will bring love drinks We'll be cuddling soon We'll be cuddling soon By the silvery moon 
And you must remember snow time Ain't no time to stay Outdoors and spoon So shine on Shine on harvest moon For me and my girl You know, there seems to be a difference of opinion about the color of the moon because Rogers and Hart described it something like this. Blue moon, you saw me standing alone. Oh, someone else wrote, the moon was yellow and the night was young. Yeah, let me see, there's moon over Miami. Moonlight in Vermont. Yeah, moonlight on the Ganges. Moonlight in Roses. Yes, and how about moonlight cocktail? Oh, yes, from which you probably get a little moon glow. Mm. And how about Moonlight Serenade? Well, that must be the national anthem for moon country. Yes, which must have this running through it. Moon River, uh, Andy Williams song. I'm crossing you in style someday. Where there's music Oh yeah How sweet the tune Somewhere there's heaven How high the moon Fly me to the moon And let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like On Jupiter and Mars In other words Come fly, let's fly away If you can use some exotic views Watch the earth from miles away A shuttle flight would be just right So name the day Come fly with me Oh yeah! Come fly with me Come fly, let's fly, let's fly Let's fly away On July 16, 1969, the crew of Apollo 11 prepared for a journey that has been called the greatest single step in human history. A flight to the moon, manned exploration, and a safe return back to Earth. It was four in the morning when mission commander Neil Armstrong, command module pilot Michael Collins, and lunar module pilot Edwin Aldrin Jr. began to suit up for their historic flight. Other astronauts had made this same trip to the launch pad, but never with such worldwide anticipation. 11, Engine ready, ready, light on. Nine, 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, Engine one, sequence start. Zero. 1, 0, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, Roger, power clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines. You're right on the money. 30 seconds, we're on the way. Stand by for At 9.32 a.m., the first stage rockets ignited and cast an orange glow over the Florida sky. The liftoff was perfect, and now it would be smooth sailing with only 239,136 miles to go. Good radar data. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up the set. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Head. Hey. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a uh, fair amount of detail. 
Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Sunday, July 20th, 1969. Around the world, nearly one billion people watched this moment on television as the first man from Earth prepared to set foot on the moon. At the foot of the ladder, the lamp foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. I'm going to step off the lamp now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here's Buzz Aldrin coming down to join Neil, and together they performed a number of scientific experiments. Along with medals honoring their fellow astronauts who lost their lives in the space effort, they left a plaque that read, Here are men from the planet Earth first set foot on the moon July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. And just before they boarded the lunar module for the return trip, they planted the first American flag on the moon. And the flags were out for them when they got home, too. What a reception they got. And they earned it. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong, right here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Those films bring back some great memories. And Neil, that was some speech you made when you first stepped on the moon. When did you prepare that? Actually, I didn't think about that until after we landed on the moon's surface. Really? You thought that up all by yourself, huh? Well, it was a little late to call a writer's meeting when you're coming down that ladder. <laughs> Maybe that's why I never went there. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, if that was me up there, I probably would have said, the eagle has landed and so has the chicken. But Bob, that trip was a perfect example of teamwork. Thousands of people working on an unprecedented project like that and nothing serious went wrong. And I'm not sure about that. I heard a nasty rumor that you left home without your American Express card. <laughs> Dale, before becoming an astronaut, you were a test pilot at NASA's Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California, right? That's right, Bob. And according to the records, you flew over 200 different models of aircraft, including jets, rockets, helicopters, and gliders. Yeah. Boy, you're not afraid to face danger, are you? I'm here. <laughs> oh. And you gotta laugh, but I'm glad. <laughs> Tell me, when did you first learn to fly? When I was 15, Bob. Oh, you're kidding. 15? When I was 15, the closest I came to flying was having a propeller on my beanie. <laughs> Neil, a lot of people might not know this, but I should be calling you professor. Well, I used to teach and do research at the University of Cincinnati. Would you like to give me a grade on my monologue? I don't think so, Bob. I taught aerospace engineering, and I'm used to grading things that get off the ground. <laughs> Is it unpatriotic to kick an astronaut in the shins? Bob, that didn't come out the way I meant it. It was a brilliant monologue. I'd give it an A+. Oh, nice cop-out. Thank you. A short time after Neil came back from the moon, he appeared with me on some of the shows we were doing in Vietnam. I'd like to show you some of those clips right now. I've had the privilege of meeting some outstanding men in our time, but the very quiet and soft-spoken young man you're about to meet now is a part of a team that provided this world with a thrill they will not soon forget. Ladies and gentlemen, the first man to set foot on the moon, Neil Armstrong, right here.
Thank you, guys. I've been around the world a few times, and I've had a lot of nice, warm receptions, but I've never had a better one than that. Thank you. It was like this every place we played. They just idolized this man. And at every base, we had a question and answer period. I'd like to find out, what did it feel like to be the first man to step on the moon? Well, we were very worried about uh, our first steps on the moon because uh, some people, had, some experts had predicted just shortly before launch that we would sink into the surface uh, and wouldn't be able to uh, hold our weight at all and we'd just disappear into the dust. And of course, we were really uh, pleased to find out that they were, they were wrong. <laughs> Is that two girls or one girl with two heads? <laughs> what, what is it, darling? We'd like to know when you're going to take the first woman to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. When do you want to go? <laughs> we welcome you with open arms. <laughs> we really, I really think that we'll have some women in space one of these days. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm sure they're going when they find out they can go up there and be weightless. Thank you. What's your question, son? Did you get extra pay for going to the moon? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they deducted 50% uh, for uh, government quarters available. <laughs> deducted for uh, government meals available and uh, by the time I got done for the whole trip uh, to the moon back quarantine and uh, eight days down Cape Kennedy for flight I got $43 <laughs> Neil, they got a kick seeing you there, and they felt that way about you all over the world. They tell me you were decorated by 17 countries. Well, those were really meant for all of us, Bob, but you've been decorated by quite a few countries yourself. That's true, true, and some of those tomato stains just don't come out. <laughs> uh, do you have any advice for the youngsters out there who might want to take over your job someday? Yes, just study hard and be the best at whatever you want to do. The program will find you. And do you have any advice for youngsters who may want to take over your job someday? Yes, become astronauts. <laughs> Bob, uh, NASA's first 25 years were spectacular. And if they can continue to get young people with strengths in science and mathematics, I'm certain the next 25 can be even better. Well, you certainly gave them a great start. Thank you. Neil Armstrong, ladies and gentlemen.